We claim that the amortized time bound for each operation on the skew heap is big O of log n. So uh, now let's try to prove it. When we talk about any operation, uh, since insertions and deletions uh, just merge, right? Insertion is a special case of merge, and delete is just delete the root node plus a merge. So they are basically just merge. So we can concentrate on the function merge. If we can prove that each merge will take an amortized log n time, then uh, we are done, right? And we claim that the amortized time bound is big O of log n, and we try to prove this. Well, recall that we have studied uh, three different methods of doing amortized analysis, right? And the most powerful one is the potential function method. The key step, or say the hardest part, is to define a proper potential function. If the potential function is well defined, then the rest of the proof is quite simple, right? Uh, well, d sub i is the structure of the problem, and that's simple. We can just define it to be, uh, say, the root of the resulting tree, or say, the resulting tree. Okay, no big difference. And the potential is what? Again, uh, people have tried uh, many different ways of defining this potential function and obtain different results. For example, one way to define the potential function could be to define it to be the number of right nodes in the tree. Will it work? And the answer is not really, because what? When we do the amortized analysis, we always assume that we start from the empty cases. So at the very beginning, we have two empty heaps, which means the initial value of this potential function is zero. And after a sequence of operations, uh, the number of right nodes is guaranteed to be non-negative, right? Uh, so it satisfies the basic requirements. However, it won't work because, because this function is guaranteed to be an increasing function, or say a non-decreasing function. Because in one step, we are swapping left and right subtrees so all the right nodes becomes left nodes. But then in the next step, all those original right nodes will become right nodes again. And, and this right path is for sure getting longer and longer. So when the right path gets longer, it corresponds to our bad case. right? A good potential function is supposed to be able to tell the difference between a good case and a bad case. Amortized means sometimes we're in good luck and sometimes we're in bad luck, right? So when we're in good luck, the potential function is supposed to help us to save our good luck. And therefore, when we encounter bad luck, we can ask the potential function to pay for the bad luck. But if we define the potential function to be the number of right nodes, this function can only reflect the bad cases, never the good cases. Okay, that's why it doesn't work. The one that really works is this. So instead of defining it to be the number of right nodes, we define it to be the number of heavy nodes. Heavy nodes means, say if a node is heavy, it means that the number of descendants of piece right subtree is at least half of the number of descendants of p. What does it mean? It means that the size of its right subtree, the total number of nodes in its right subtree, must be larger than at least half. At least half of the total. It means it must be no smaller than the size of its left subtree. So how would the heavy node look like? A heavy node, we take this heavy node as the root of a subtree. If this node is heavy, it means that its right subtree is larger than its left subtree. All right? 
So that reflects the bad case. And light otherwise means if the left subtree is larger than its right subtree, we say this node is a light node. And here that the number of descendants of a node includes the node itself. So when we talk about the size of a subtree, uh, the root itself is also included. All right. So let's define the potential function to be the number of heavy nodes in the tree. And let's see how it works. So for example, these are the two heaps we have. And there are three heavy nodes. This one is heavy because it contains more nodes, two nodes in its right subtree and only one node in its left subtree. So its right subtree is heavier and therefore this one is a heavy node. And same reason for this one and also this one. Okay, and treat them as two skill heaps. And I would suggest you to pause the video now and take a minute to merge these two heaps. Uh, and then we're going to compare the results. So what do you get? This one, right? Okay, so these are the three heavy nodes after the merging. Can you see the pattern here? Well, for these two nodes, six and nine, before merging, they are the heavy nodes. And after, they are still the heavy nodes. Their status are not changed, right? What is changed is the status of these two nodes, right? Before merging, one is a heavy node, and after it becomes a light node. And for the node 8, so before merging, it was a light node, and after it becomes a heavy node. What's so special about these two nodes? What's in common? Well, by observation, we can find that the only nodes whose heavy and light status can change are nodes that are initially on the right path, right? Eight is along the right path of the first heap, and one is along the right path of the second heap. All right, now let's take a closer look uh, with this notation. And this is the notation for heap one and heap two, where I is either one or two. And for the two heaps, this gives the total nodes, the total number of nodes along the right path, okay, where L stands for light, is the number of light nodes, uh, H stands for heavy, that's the total number of heavy nodes, okay, uh, so this sum gives the total number of nodes along the right path. With this notation, uh, we can see that the worst case time complexity of one merge is proportional to the total number of right nodes, which is the sum of the light nodes plus the sum of the heavy nodes. To be more accurate, I should have written big O of this sum here, but it, it doesn't really matter. I just simplify this equation. Um, so this is the actual worst case time. Now let's take a closer look at the potential functions. So before merge, the potential function is defined to be the total number of heavy nodes, right? So it's the sum of the total number of heavy nodes along the right path of the first heap plus that in the second heap plus the total number of other heavy nodes like 6 and 9, all right? So in this example, before merge, the potential value is just one, since we only have one heavy node here, right? And after merge, what's going to happen? How is the total number of heavy nodes changed? We know that those heavy nodes that are not along the right path, those heavy nodes are not changed. So it's going to be still an H here, right? And one very important fact is that after merge, all those heavy nodes along the right path will turn into a light node. It's guaranteed 
to be turned into a light node. Why? So pause the video and think about it. Okay, why? Because if it was a heavy node, it means that it has a larger right subtree, right? During the merge process, we're supposed to blindly swap its left and right children. And therefore, after swapping them, its right subtree is supposed to be smaller. And its new left subtree is supposed to be heavier. It's supposed to be larger, right? And after swapping, we're supposed to do all the operations in its left subtree, right? Uh, so its left subtree is going to get larger and larger. It's going to get heavier and heavier in its left subtree. And its right subtree is guaranteed to be small. And therefore, if it was a heavy node, after swapping its children, it's guaranteed to be a new light node. Okay, so after merge, all those heavy nodes will turn into light nodes. And some of the light nodes, not all of them, will turn into heavy. So in this case, there are five light nodes before the merge. And afterward, only one node turns into a heavy node. But since we're talking about the worst case, it's smaller than or equal to in the worst case. So what is the worst case? The worst case is that every light node will be turned into a heavy node after merge, right? So before merge, we have that many light nodes. And in the worst case, after merge, we're supposed to have that many heavy nodes, plus those heavy nodes that are not initially on the right path. So here we go. We have the formula that the amortized time bound is the actual time plus the difference between the two potential function values, right? So what do we get? We have this part plus this part minus this part. Uh, and is smaller than or equal to in the worst case, right? And we realize that h will be canceled out. Oh, actually, all the heavy nodes will be canceled out. And what is left is 2 times the sum of the light nodes. OK, so this is the upper bound for the amortized time. And what's left to be proven is that this part is big O of log n. How come? Since light, light means that its right subtree is smaller than its left subtree, right? And based on this fact, you should be able to prove, although we are not sure about the total right path length, we can be sure that the number of light nodes along the right path must be big O of log n. And therefore, we can prove that this part is actually big O of log n, and therefore, we are done.